Worthington Prayer Garden? Hey, Ava. Hey, Margo. Having fun? It's not Margo's jam. It's getting real. I'm out. Wait. What if Norma and I showed you the secret very few people have ever seen? The church tool shed? <laughs> <laughs> what Harry is talking about is the HO2000 temporal displacement modulator. A piece of garbage. This piece of garbage was built by Henry Olsen. The pastor? The pastor built a time machine? Yes, he did. And we've used it to travel through time. What? That's amazing! Let's fire it up! Unfortunately, last time we used it, we completely used up its power source of a rare iridium isotope. And it never worked accurately anyway. Um, it never took us to the correct time. Coincidence, it just happens to be out of power. Okay, you've seen it. As your counselors, we better get you back to these years. On our way! Come on, Margo! There's no way this problem could ever... What's the matter? Your power strap turns on. Impossible. Your imagination is playing tricks on you. That's ridiculous because I don't have imagination. <laughs> I know that now. This can't be possible. It's happening again. Hold on, everybody. <laughs>
How do you control that many drops in anyway? Well, if it were working correctly, we just punch in the date we want to go, then we flip this switch, and it still isn't turning on. Guys, this is Whitney. She gave me a gift. It's called a scrunchie. <laughs>
Yes, God always provides. In fact, we are using an heritage from my grandfather to help fund this product. It is a joy to give away gifts that we receive. Buddy, let me give you some advice. Bad things happen in the future. You look out for yourself because no one else will. Really? I hadn't really thought of it that way. Wait, how do you know what's going to happen in the future? Margo, I don't know much about time travel, but I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to change it. That's a perfect trick. I was going to see you last week until I was going to change it on Minnie and the perfect stop for Doc who? Never mind. Just a couple of steps. And there's an apple, Google, star spot. We've been learning a lot about how God's love is displayed in our everyday lives when we surrender to Him. Ava is controlling the machine. We just need her to get in the machine 
and it will work. Now whether it'll take us to the correct date is questionable, but still, progress. Ava, Margo, come here, we figured out how the machine works. Far out, man. <laughs> wait, wait, don't get in yet. Now the machine has started. It's you, Ava. Me? No.
on Jesus and what he did on the cross, the, the things that matter today won't matter as much. Jesus conquered sin and death and we are victorious through him. We just need to keep our eyes on him. Hmm. I was just curious. Everyone seems really serious about the cross. Sorry to interrupt, but we need to go back to the 1920s and fix whatever happened. To disrupt the timeline and create this alternate future.
He was. And the, the Bible said that he asked his friends to stay and pray with him, but they fell asleep and left him alone. This is right before he went to go die in the house for us. I never really thought of that story being real. I don't know him the way you all seem to, but I want to. <coughs> Let's 
hope everything is back to normal. Margo, I see Whitney gave you a scrunchie. Oh. It's big, it's puffy, I like it! You <laughs> wake me in church and Pastor Henry Olsen for sponsoring my vacation Bible school this year at the beautiful CW Burlington Park. Let's begin our closing ceremonies. Let's do this! So for those of y'all who feel you're a generation behind your time, or maybe a generation ahead of your time, maybe just right on time, uh, I'm David McIntosh. Uh, it is my uh, immense uh, grace and privilege to, to be the pastor of the Hartsville Presbyterian Church and to have uh, spent this week uh, with uh, these young folks uh, in um, a wonderful week of friendship and of mutual ministry and mutual care uh, to one another. Um, you want, you want to know a secret? Let me tell you how it works. It's, it's, it's not actually yeah, gigabytes. Uh, it was a small amount of plutonium, but uh, somebody lost it. Uh, if you have it under your chair, let me know. Um, and, it, and it's not actually about a time machine. Uh, the Bible tells us that it's not good for man to be alone. That God made us for community. He made us dependent creatures. And that nobody, nobody exists with the capacity within themselves of everything that they need. And so what we need is community. And what we need is friendship. Uh, and uh, in that, what we need, actually, the Bible tells us, because we haven't been really good at friendship, uh, is we need a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And that's why we need the Lord Jesus Christ as a crucified uh, Savior. Uh, because that's the kind of Savior that can save to the uttermost of all those uh, that come uh, to God through Him. And so let me, let me actually give you a technical definition, uh, if I could, and then I'll introduce you to somebody. Uh, I've taught my kids for as long as I can remember, and uh, as much as I can until they, that's just all they know and all they have a sense of what a good friend is. A good friend has three qualities. A good friend loves God, loves to do what God commands, and loves when you do the same. And so I'd like to introduce you to 40 of my good friends. Uh, during the year, most of the time, I work uh, as the only staff member, but this week of the year, I have 40 assistants. Uh, if you'll notice the, uh, the students that are in the pink shirts, these are my good friends. Because they love God, they love to do what He commands, and they love when I do the same. And the key to this is all the pink shirts have ministered all week have been good friends all week to all of us in the orange shirts. And so, um, let me just say to my pink shirted friends, um, thank you for that, um, for the encouragement, uh, for the grace, for the love, uh, to see the way that you've loved us and uh, love these uh, children and love one another, uh, to see the grace of God in your patience all week, uh, in your service, in your kindness, in your endurance, 
Uh, they have not only served uh, us in the orange shirts uh, in the mornings, they have gone out in the community and in the heat in the afternoon to serve uh, people in the community, and then we've uh, kept them up in the evening to have some fun and fellowship uh, together. Um, and in that, you have each and all been a good friend to me as much as you've been a good friend uh, to all these others. And I can, I can say without any reservation that when I think about our elder brother, the Lord Jesus Christ, and what it would mean to grow up into the fullness and the measure of the stature of Christ, that having seen your love and your kindness and your patience and your uh, service and cheerfulness and joy, that's exactly what I want to be like when I grow up. I want to be just like when I grow up. And I want you folks in the orange shirts to recognize this is actually a pivotal year in our Bible and music camp. Because this, I think if I'm correct, this is the first year that we've had folks that started the BAM camp in the nursery that are now wearing pink shirts and serving and loving you. And what that means is that they've grown up. They've fixed their eyes on Christ in all those years, and they're growing up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. And you too can do that. As you fix your eyes on Christ, and as you uh, look to Him, and as He loves you, and you love Him back, uh, you too will grow in that way. You'll have the opportunity as that love is stored in your heart for it to come out your life the way it's come out uh, these, uh, these folks in the pink shirts all week uh, to you. And I hope that you will indeed uh, grow up uh, in that way. And uh, if you're one of those who feel in some way that you're a little bit alone or that you uh, would like some friends and a community that would help you fix your eyes on Jesus, uh, and that you too would be able to grow up into the measure and the stature and the fullness of that grace and love, uh, we'd love to talk to you about that. We'd love to be that community for you. We'd love to be those uh, friends to you. So uh, if you are a, a, a parent uh, of one of these uh, young folks in the pink shirts, uh, I hope that you don't think they need to be just like you. I hope that you'll find in who they are, uh, they're becoming more and more uh, like Jesus Christ. And if you're uh, one of the parents of one of these uh, folks in the orange shirts, as we're going to let you uh, collect them in just a second, I hope as you do, you'll take the opportunity to thank one of these students in the pink shirts for being a good friend. And uh, let's pray as we close. I got to follow we thank you for your goodness. And all throughout time, uh, you have loved the people, and you have been kind, and you have been gracious, and you have worked that kindness and that graciousness into your own people uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that as we look to Him and as we trust in Him, uh, though we may not be perfect, uh, we may indeed be saved. We may be sanctified. We may become more and more like our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Father, for all of us, as your children, we pray that we might indeed grow up into maturity, into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And that in order to do that, you would also grace us with good friends. And so, Father, we thank you for this uh, good week with these good friends. And we thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.